So in general, semiconductor stocks, the SMH, Vanek, Vectors Semiconductor ETF, it's up over 66% from last Christmas Eve to the high that we hit for that ETF in mid-November. The numbers haven't necessarily been that strong, though. The gains we've seen in the stocks, does that make sense? Yep. The uh, overriding thing about semiconductors is Moore's Law. In uh, 2018, the last year for which we have numbers, the market was $474 billion with a B. Uh, when I started in chips, it was $30 billion. So basically, there's little bounces on a curve that just keeps going like that. This week, we get reports that Huawei is making a smartphone without American chips. Do you think it's appropriate to say that we are actually seeing this decoupling between the U.S. and China in terms of tech? And would an actual trade deal change that? Uh, there is a decoupling. It was initiated by the Chinese several years ago. Uh, they use about 30 3% of the chips made in the world, and the Americans make about 42% of the chips in the world. So there's an imbalance. We ship a lot more to them than they ship to us. And they declared uh, as an official five-year plan they were going to become self-sufficient in chips. So this phone is a, what I would call a demonstration vehicle. It's not economically significant uh, moving in that direction. So the key point here being that this was happening even before the U.S. started cracking down on Huawei. Absolutely. Uh, they, they announced, as a matter of fact, one of the reasons we cracked down uh, was, was uh, in reciprocation. TJ, uh, there's been a lot of action in ARM-based systems this year. Microsoft announced the Surface Pro X, which isn't quite as full featured as an Intel-based PC, but it's getting a lot closer. Then this week, uh, AWS uh, announced AWS Graviton 2, an ARM-based uh, instances in, in the data center uh, for, for really computing. Are we at a turning point where ARM-based systems are really going to challenge Intel in a way that they haven't in the past? Uh, they're important. Uh, you know, Acorn Risk Machines, ARM, uh, English company that, that makes uh, generic processors. They're all in a computer. Uh, when you buy them, you buy uh, code, and then you can turn that code into a chip of your design and your fab. And they become more and more sophisticated over time, and their biggest chips are now starting to, to nudge into Intel land. I won't say they're at parity with Intel, but, but they matter. And if you don't have Intel's apparatus for designing chips, uh, they're, they're a viable option for you. As we head into another decade, I mean, we're, we talk so much about 5G coming, some of, the, uh, some of the things that have happened, some of the breakthroughs that have happened in quantum computing. We talk a lot about AI, and I realize a lot of these intersect. Um, but what do you see as the big trends that will, I guess, mark and shape the coming years? Uh, I think the, the curve I described before, which I'll label the Moore's Law Curve, the thing that's taken us to, you know, half a trillion dollars, uh, that curve's going to slow down. Uh, we're using electronics more and more in everything, but we don't need the super small line with super high performance chips uh, for almost everything we do. Uh, so I think this is not in the next few years for sure, but I think over the next decade or two, uh, that curve is not going to stop growing, but it's going to flatten out. And uh, the reason it's going to continue to grow, for example, is, you know, it used to be a, a, a car had no transistors in it unless they were in the radio a long time ago. And, and now there are 100 microcontrollers or more in almost every modern vehicle. Uh, so the microcontroller being a computer with analog IOs on it. So uh, growth is going to continue. Uh, rate's going to slow down, I think.